nonprofits, let's raise more money. For this episode, we delve into the art of saying thank you to our incredible donors. Our special guest, David Wax, the visionary of handwritten, shares insights on how a handwritten letter can transform appreciation into a heartfelt connection. Let's get right into it. You asked about what we do with nonprofits. We literally help them fundraise, and then we spend most of our time actually is spent coaching them on, like I was just on a podcast recently where it was kind of funny where I don't have a problem saying it. I was like, most of our time is actually spent on things that we don't even invoice people for, <laughs> if that makes sense. Really? So I don't know if that's the best business model. <laughs> well, you're but, turning into a nonprofit yourself that way. Uh, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly, man. We are a for-profit company, but as like any nonprofit, even though the nonprofit, that's just a tax designation, you still got to make payroll. You still got to serve your constituents. You still got to you know, serve your people and keep them at the forefront, your clients, your people. So for us, our client is, our clients, there's layers. So we work with a ton, our equity, as a lot of people could probably say in business, our equity are our clients. It's been mm-hmm. amazing. We've been very, very fortunate. And prolific at at creating relationships in the space. And so we work with some large, like multinational nonprofits and charities and some huge conservation groups and stuff like that. But we also work with and get the the privilege to work with really small, like Catholic schools, like the one my daughter goes to or what have you, and help them raise $50,000 at their annual gala and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So the full, the full spectrum, brother, we decided I'm rambling and highly caffeinated, but being good arbiters of that information, being vessels, we decided just to give it away. The information just don't, you know what I mean? Just the, I think it's smart. I mean, it's a tactic. A lot of people are taking and it makes sense. It it poises you as a knowledge leader in the, a thought leader in the industry. It's also a great way probably for you to get clients from both guests and you know, yeah. n- new people. So that's awesome. Well, yeah, I say that, I say that to a lot of people like internally too, like our team for lack of a you know, sales team or whatever, you know, we're very disarming by nature. Right. You know, and I think there's a lot of value there. I know anyway, I could have all sorts of business theories and things like that I could share, but we're, yeah, we've been in it in real time for, like I said, seven years and it's really, really cool, but enough about what we do. No. I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you taking the time from the Valley of the Sun, a place that we're very, very fond of. We go, we, we're down there probably, you know, four to six times a year because we love it so much. And if I ever left my beautiful little hamlet here in far Northern California, the first place that I would go with my family would be uh, your neck of the woods. So pleasure to have well, thank you on, you. man. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. It's always great to chat with people like you. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I know a little bit about your, your background, obviously entrepreneurial. You're a business yep, builder. This is my yep. second startup. The okay. first one was text messaging before the iPhone. And it actually plays into why I do what I do. But And you're talking about your second one, you're talking about handy written. Yeah. Yep. Handwritten yeah. is what I do now. And we are the largest provider of robotic handwritten notes in the world. We see a true opportunity to help nonprofits. And that seems to be the case. We have a number of very large nonprofits using us now. And then cool. like you, a lot of smaller nonprofits, but yep. there's a real case for donor relationships, donor engagement, improving redonation rates. So that's why I think it's so important. And kind of getting back to what I did before, because it plays into this, I used to mm-hmm. do text messaging before the iPhone came out and we grew that past the iPhone. You know, we were doing a million texts a day for Abercrombie and Fitch and Toys R Us, Sam's Club. And what I realized is we were part of the noise. You know, yep. when, when we sold the company, you know, everybody's getting 130 to 150 emails a day. They're spending 23% of their time managing their inbox at work. Yep. Then you add in all the text messages and now you add in all the teams and the slacks and the tweets and Facebook and everything yep. else. It's just all noise and none of it stands mm-hmm. out. But what stands out is when you get a handwritten note because nobody's doing that. So when it's a everybody art, zigs, right? you zag, you know, yeah, I mean? it's a lost art. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I see I see practical application immediately in the nonprofit space. You started the company for yep. to help nonprofits, to help nonprofits directly or is that something that you just kind of like quote unquote stumbled on like oh my goodness, this outreach to donors and supporters, this is a massive opportunity for nonprofits. Kind of just give me the background there. It was we started 
with just the idea of handwritten note automation. Yep. And yep. then cool. when we really took a look at the verticals that we could really help, nonprofits was the number one vertical. Just wow. because every time somebody gives a donation, they should be thanked. I agree. You know, there's tons of nonprofits out there that could obviously benefit from a helping hand. And handwritten mm -hmm. is kind of a helping hand in that it takes it takes your staff away from writing handwritten notes or it takes your staff away from having to manage people to write handwritten notes for you, yeah. or they're not doing it anyway. You know, like you could have yeah. a pizza party, get a bunch of people in and write handwritten notes, but there's risk there. How do they look? Do they have pizza grease on them? You know, all that. Um, or <laughs> yeah. a lot of people just don't write them at all. And yeah. there's some studies out there that say the number one reason people don't redonate and why redonations are sub 50% is because people don't feel thanked. And that could sure. be they weren't thanked full stop, yep. you know, which is shame on the nonprofit for not thanking. It right. could be they were thanked, but they didn't think it was genuine. Like they received an automated email or text and it was clear. With an envelope just, for another donation with a stamp on it or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 100%. Right. Yeah. They could have received yeah. a printed envelope in the mail that they didn't open because they thought it was a, yeah. it had a return mailer in it. Yeah. So for those yeah. reasons, yeah, they could have been thanked, but they didn't open it. But what they do right. open is handwritten notes, three times greater than, than printed. So we're seeing our organizations, our nonprofits really kind of latch on to that and they're seeing the value out of the box. They're smart for embracing it. We're big believers. Like I believe there's, there's more power right now in differentiation than even head to head competition, right? That's kind of how I view it. Cause there's so much out there. You were talking about attention. You're talking about noise. Mm -hmm. It's 2023 going into 2024. There's all these things that are vying for our attention. We could even argue there's a lot of things vying for our attention that like really try to rob us of our joy, but you get a nice handwritten note. I think it's a beautiful differentiator, which I think yeah. is a, can be a huge competitive advantage, obviously. Right. And yep. at the end of the day, we're, we're stressing to nonprofits that your supporters, your donors are consumers at yep. the end of the day. So we have to not necessarily treat them the same way or treat them like we're trying to sell them a pair of shoes, you know, or what have you, but it's a good, it's a good place to start when you're really looking at the landscape. You know what I mean? Yeah. And speaking of consumers on our website, handwritten.com and it's hand, handwritten with a Y. So H-A-N-D-W-R-Y-T-T-N. If you go there. Oh, that's why that's a Y. Okay. Yeah. If you go Y, because we love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you go to the resources tab, there's uh -huh. the consumer outreach survey, which is consumer based, not nonprofit based. But to your point, a lot of the findings apply. What people are saying by and large is they don't feel appreciated by their brands. Yeah. What ways of communication communication are the most personal to reach out to them. The number one way is phone calls, but phone totally. calls can also be considered the most annoying because it's on your time frame, not the consumer's time frame. You know, it's, totally. it's convenient yeah. for you to pick up the phone. It's probably not convenient for them. So Absolutely. the second most personal form of communication is handwritten notes, which have a very, very low risk of being annoying, the least risk of being annoying. So if you're trying you to balance it on your that, agenda, your time, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you're trying to balance yeah. that, and then plus the handwritten note has the ability of sticking around, like being stuck to the refrigerator or on a bookshelf, a phone call's not gonna do it. It can be indelible. No, no yeah. quite. Oh, I can think of tremendous upside. I just like the idea, and, and I can't thank you enough for shedding light on this, David, because it's awesome that we get to speak about marketing yeah. in the now for nonprofits. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, th and this study, you know, please download it. It's, it's free. Yeah. People that feel appreciated, buy more, refer more, buy more yep. frequently. So, yep. you know, that you could just say the analog, they donate more, donate more frequently and cr become a, a a brand ambassador or a nonprofit amb ambassador and tell other people about the cause. So, yep. so what I would say is if you're not actually sending real handwritten notes, try it. And if you right. can't do real handwritten notes because it's too time consuming or you don't have the staff or whatever, enlist a company like handwritten to do it for you. I love that. Because there's magic great. there. I actually think that there, you're absolutely correct to expand on that. We've had guests on where they've literally done handwritten notes. And I like that you're, you're, you're saying, Hey, do that first. I think it's a great place to start. Then once you hit a number where you're like succumbing to the pressure of yeah. passing, I remember a guest, a friend of our company was like literally at 400 a month doing this big, huge capital campaign. She got $600,000 in recurring donations annually to one community organization just by mail outreach. Yeah. And she was, she was a, yeah, she was really a tactician of it. Like, where do I put this font? And where do I, you know, what, what coloring is this? You know what I mean? Yeah. And 
And she said, once I got to that point where I literally cannot, and I, and I love her for it, and I think it's amazing, and I think your advice should be well-received, start, start by doing it. And then once you reach a point, like I said, where you're feeling the weight of like, oh, okay, this is getting too cumbersome and too popular. <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then, then you're, then you're bound by nothing as far as what you can put out in the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you know, people just to kind of head it off the past, people say, well, is it insincere? I would say let's go way back to the fifties or sixties mm -hmm. when CEOs would want to send their customers or clients a handwritten note. They'd have their secretary do it and they'd sign it, right? Correct. This is kind of that. If somebody realizes it's not written by you, which is a low likelihood, unless you yep. say, was this written by a robot? You know, if you give it to them and say, was this written by a robot or this came from handwritten, can you tell? They're not going to know. But let's say they do know. It's sure. still doing something a little different than sending an email or sending... I think you know, a text I, or not sending anything at all. I couldn't agree with you more. I couldn't agree with you more. We say to folks all the time that maybe like they're getting to, to start, you know, pick up the phone and making some big asks or getting folks to sponsor an event or underwrite certain things. And they go, hey, Trev, you know, what do we start with? And I said, you know, what you can always start with. It's always worked really, really well for me is thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could just start yeah. there. So I just think it's another layer of that. I think it's under, it sounds so simple because we're taught this, you know, as youths, <laughs> very early yep. on there's a lot of magic and i just call it manners but i actually call it on a bigger thing because i've done a lot of writing about thank you and the power of thank you and i'm big into interrupting the loop like you said you could put these things on the refrigerator there's in there's they're indelible these messages they carry a lot of weight with people especially nowadays when everything's so you know tech and screen driven right yeah. we're getting back to, you know history always repeats itself with whatever fashion or what have you and and handwritten notes are not relics they're indelible like we've said but I think, and I'm going to ask you this question, David, because you obviously do more research because it's your business than I do. I think that there's a, a lack in general of graciousness mm -hmm. in the culture right now. And I oh. know that's not like a big aha, heady, you know. You know I talk about that marketing. all the time. I, you know, yeah. people are like, what's the ROI on the thank you note? You know, and I say, if you're asking for ROI, you're missing the measurable. Point. We are a culture that is very entitled at this point. Yeah, yes. of course you're going to donate to my nonprofit. Yeah, you're. of course you're going to buy from my car dealership. Yeah, yes. of course you're yes. going to buy from my online store. No, I'm not. There's a million choices out there for oh, where yeah. I'm going to spend my money. You should be grateful that I spent it with you or donated right. to you. And people yep. don't do that. I don't know if it's yep. laziness or poor manners or something in the yeah. zeitgeist, but it's, yeah. it's, it's a real problem. Yeah, we could assign a lot of different monikers to it. You and I are in lockstep. We could say entitlement. I think that people are very self-absorbed, right? Yep. I also don't think it's wrong to expect that, obviously, when you've made when you've spent your hard-earned money on a, on a mission or on anything, a product or anything, for that matter, whether it be tangible or not, or really helping people, you know, in in the world. But I I think that we get into a place where we're so self-absorbed. There's so much going on, and obviously our stuff in our orbit is more important than anything else. That we get into a place, especially as businesses or nonprofits where no news is good news. We've adopted this kind of like, well, mm -hmm. they know that I'm grateful. They know I am because, you know, most point. people, I actually believe people are inherently good still, <laughs> despite what you'll see, you know, we're depending on where you decide to put your attention these days. I don't question the good nature of people that aren't creating this outreach and, and taking these opportunities to express their, yeah. their gratitude and graciousness and just simple thank you. But I think we get into a place where, David, I could talk about it in the familial level. I could talk about it at home where I don't think there's graciousness and gratitude sometimes in the home. And that gets, you know, that I don't want to get into like, you know, that kind of stuff. But you get my point. It's like just saying thank you to people with, the, you know, with the right emphasis and the right time at a very personal level in your interpersonal communications with your family. That's huge because we get in this place where it's like, they know I'm grateful. They know I feel that right. way because it's, I'm a good name. And they know me the as a person. explicit, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. I say this term a lot. We need to twist the dial on that because we think that people know that, but they need to hear it. And the, the more methodology, you, you said phone calls. I believe in text messages. If you know the person, you came from that background. I believe in emails still. But yeah. I do. I'm a, I'm actually a huge, you know, I'm a huge believer, you know, in the handwritten note, you know, and, and and what have you. And I just think it's another beautiful layer. Forgive me if I if I say throwback, but it kind of is. Yeah. And I think it's awesome, and it needs to come back. 
You know yeah. what I mean? In yeah. a big way. Yeah. And people, you know, back to the ROI, people are like, well, what's the ROI on this? And I say, you know, that's missing the point. But I also yeah. say, you know, and then they want to throw in offers or referral Correct. requests or something okay. in there. And okay. that dilutes the thank you, you know? Yep. And yep. so I preach what I call the full stop thank you, which is just say thank you. Don't ask yeah. for anything. There's other yeah. opportunities to ask for things. But right. after a donation, I don't think it's the time. You could follow up two you. months later and say, hey, yep. your donation really helped. This is what we're yep. trying to do now. Yep. Would you be willing to redonate? But in the moment, so you know, don't dilute your thank you by throwing an, a call to action on it. Brother, you're, you're preaching You're preaching to everything that we say. My partner, Jason, has come up with, a, he's the most prolific fundraiser I've ever met in my life. And he came up with, if you receive a donation or someone made a, you know, wrote a $10,000 check at your event, you need to thank them seven times before you ever ask them for a cup of coffee. You know what I mean? Before you ever ask them for anything, mm -hmm. especially monetary, minimum seven times. We are big proponents. We've done podcasts and webinars about handwritten notes. Mm -hmm. picking up the phone. Hey, can I take you out for a cup of coffee just so I can thank you? That kind of stuff. But yeah, we're, we're in lockstep on that as well. I think it's huge and should not be overlooked. So you don't want to dilute the message. Point taken there. I hope the audience gets a lot out of that. Another thing that I was, I was kind of waiting to ask you and you segued nicely into it was I'm assuming you're adopting some form of brevity with some, with this messaging, or at least you're advising. <laughs> yes. Okay, cool. Right, right, right. A thousand good, good. percent. People, yeah. A, they, you know, not so much for the nonprofit space, yeah. but in other spaces, they say, do you write letters to full eight and a half by 11? And we pause and we say, yes, we can. It's going to be expensive because it takes twice as or three or four times as long for the robot to do it. But right. second of all, nobody's going to believe it that you sat yeah. down and wrote a novel to each customer. Yeah. Also, good call. the less you write, the better it looks because yeah. it's bigger. You know, as yeah. soon as you start writing a lot, the font gets smaller. If you write a little, the font gets bigger. It looks more realistic. Yeah. Thirdly, we live in the Twitter generation where, you know, tweets until very recently were 140 characters, texts were 160. People yeah. are used to short. And as soon as you, you know, go over like 400 characters, their eyes cross. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, keep it short so they read it. If they don't read it, you lost, you know, they might say, oh, that's so nice. He sent me something. But if he doesn't, if they don't read it, it's kind of losing its message too. And people are just time constrained these days. A hundred percent. Keep it short and sweet. Thank you so much for your donation. We truly yeah. appreciate it. I have this new theory where, uh, or like, you know, like I, I suppose like idea where I'm just like, think about like Confucius. And I'm, when you're thinking about your messaging, I'm just like, chop wood, carry water. Thank you. Like, keep it very, <laughs> like, it's like keep it very brief, please. Yeah. And, and you know what's awesome, David? I, I've already thanked you for coming on. I'm going to thank you again. Is, is this like, I just, I keep saying this over and over. I say, I've been saying this every day for probably the last six months. Donors are consumers. You just talked about, you cited Twitter. You, you cited 160 characters with texting. Listen, people are conditioned yeah. <laughs> to do this. So why, and what I mean by, by saying this is that, you know, nonprofits think they're different or they have the the agency or the poetic freedom to be very, very long winded in their messaging. And what we're telling them is that's all fine and dandy. And we want you to get your message and your missions message mm -hmm. out there. Absolutely. However, when you're speaking to people in written format like this, in an eloquent fashion like this with handwritten notes, keep it brief, please, because that's where the world is. We can't change people's perception, right? And that, that perception yeah. is there going to be the reality about your mission. You know what I you mean? Know, it's but huge, what we right? can do there is if somebody really has something they need to push, yeah. you can kind of sidestep it by, our, our, through handwritten, you can design a folded or a flat card. And there's no uh -huh. additional cost yep. for it. So yep. if you want to take your cause, throw it on the front, take an image and throw it on the back, and even put some language on the top flap and you just write on the bottom flap, there you create the space for the note, which doesn't change yep. 500 or 600 characters. But on yep. the back of the card, you could have some printed type that's supplementary. Yep. Like in the last month, we've done 5,000 meals or 10,000 meals, Preach. or we've Preach. replanted yep. this many trees or whatever. Yep. And you can have yep. that on the back, on the inside top flap or on the front, Yep. supplementing the gracious thank you note without yep. Yep. getting in the way. And that way, if they take the time to read the note first, and then they're like, oh, this is nice. They flip it over. They see that. 
that's a second touch point in some ways without oh, I think any that's so problem. smart. Yeah, you're embedding that message. I think that's so smart. We just spent an hour working with nonprofits, handpicked nonprofits, and working with them in real time about getting their missions message in 10 words or less. Mm, yeah. And that's been really, really fun. And just having that, that continuity throughout their entire organization when they're speaking to someone, when a volunteer speaks to someone, when a staff member speaks to someone, or a board member, a committee member, or what have you. And I think that you could put something like that, or like you said, you know, yeah, we've sent in the last year, we've sent 50 kids to camp. You know, that right. kind of thing. I just think, I think that's massive. We're also big believers in the triumvirate. It's like, this is what we've done. This is what we're doing. And this is what we're going to be doing in the next, you know, what have you, 12 months, that kind of thing from like an annual basis. Mm -hmm. So there's all sorts of ideas. So I've got, I've got copy ideas for you too, uh, David, for templates. <laughs> the triumvirate. Yeah, no, yeah the, the triumvirate. Exactly. Yes, yes. That's and then so also important. the 10 words or less. We think that's huge, man. This is our mission's method in 10 awesome. words or less. That's yeah, awesome. yeah, really, really good stuff. So we're in the weeds on that on a regular basis. And I mean that the best possible way. So it's been really, really cool. I love the concept. I would consider it for our clients. I'm a huge believer in the handwritten note. Yeah. I'm a huge believer in interrupting the loop of folks like day to day, I call it. You know what I mean? It's like when you get a different subject line or yeah. you do get the handwritten message from someone, it, it catches their attention in a really, really unique way. And it's yeah, it's just a beautiful it's just a beautiful way to communicate. David, you already mentioned the website and the free resources. Tell folks where they can find you, if you don't mind, like the website, your social handle, all the above, so folks can find you if you don't mind. Yeah, please. Number one is visit handwritten.com, H-A-N-D-W-R-Y-T-T-E-N.com. And if you click the business tab, you can just click business and request samples there, or you can click business market solutions, nonprofit and cool. get a little bit more the sample kit will be the same but yeah. the info on the page will be a little bit more relevant to you it'll cool. show some blog entries we've done about nonprofits or thought leadership features awesome. useful for nonprofits are integrations like we integrate with blackbot and salesforce and all these yeah things. i was going to say I, I, that was my next question you integrate with blackbot salesforce any other crms like insightly or anything else like that yeah hubspot and then other ones through zapier and make we internally okay. use PipeDrive, and the way we integrate yeah. with PipeDrive is through Zapier. So it's Perfect. very doable. And then, awesome. you know, when you move a deal to a certain donor to a certain part in the, in the stage or they yeah. provide a donation, you can have that automatically trigger a handwritten note. We do the so same thing. So integration, integration will not be painful. <laughs> no, no, not at all. And we're here right. to help you. We have an integration specialist that can help you get set up. Our whole I thing is really integrating it. I was just yeah. preaching in a meeting, internal meeting. We want to be a utility, not a campaign. We don't want our clients, whether they're nonprofits okay. or retail or whatever, tool. to think of us as a campaign because no. that, A, puts a lot of tax on them. What are they going to do now using handwritten notes? How should we Pressure. budget it? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. We want to be a utility where every month they just use us to send thank you notes. And it's not Y'all are a tool. Yeah, y'all are a tool. That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, you can pound a lot of nails with that with that approach. <laughs> Part of the pun. I think it's yeah. fantastic. No, yeah. I think it's really, really great. I think it's really, really, I'm glad we were able to share this. Yeah, I'm so glad. Yeah, I'm so glad we connected. I'd like to hear more. I think it's a, I think, I think I'd like to even get in the weeds and invite you back just to talk about like sure. what really worked this particular campaign. Because I know you have some so you have some hits, you know what I mean? Yeah. That we, I think that we should definitely share. I know the audience would appreciate it, David. So thanks, thanks a ton for sharing it. Thanks a ton for what you're doing. Yeah, and please everybody check out Handwritten with a Y. Check out those free resources. And if you got anything out of the episode, do us a favor, share it, download, rate, review, subscribe, and enjoy. Thanks so much. Thank you, David. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Thanks for having me on your show. Hey everyone, thanks for listening. If you love our podcast, click the download button, rate us, and follow us on social media at HGA Fundraising. Get out there, start fundraising, and raise more money. See you next time.